Welcome back! This time we're going to talk about tech trees and at least some basic strategies and things to keep an eye out for with them. Now keep in mind this is all very contextual. A lot of this is going to be stuff where you're going to want to consider what kind of victory type you're going for, which faction you're playing as, stuff like that. But I'll at least give you a general idea of how you would start out for a typical game, as well as some things to keep an eye out for. First, some things to note with the text. They are split up into these six tiers, with the sixth tier being specifically texts that contribute towards a scientific victory and give their own really powerful bonuses as well. And just because you move up in a tier, which takes nine texts, doesn't mean you can't go back to an older tier and start getting texts from that again. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later on. And each tech tier, except for tier 6, also has three deeds, one of which is a wonder that you can build. And you can build them even if you're not in that tech tier yet, as long as somebody else is. For instance, if somebody else was in tier 2, then I'd have access to these deeds as well, but they're not quite there yet. Now, for a general tech plan, here's a couple things you'd want to consider. First are what sorts of resources are in the region that you start in. In this case, you can see I've got glass steel, nothing else. So if I wasn't playing as a vaulters who start out with open pit mines, then I would not have gotten that yet. I would have saved that for another time until say, I colonize this region because it's got some lovely spices over here and that's something that I would happily use. You'd also want to consider what kind of resources are in there. For instance, if the luxury was emeralds, which only give a defensive boost to my cities, I probably would have passed on them, because I don't find them valuable enough to waste my time getting a tech on them. Similarly with uh, grass silk in tier 3, if you're playing as a cult or the necrophage, which don't really benefit from trades as much as other factions do, specifically trade routes, then I'm not going to bother building resource extractors and researching the tech just for grass silk, because it's not really going to benefit me besides a meager approval boost. Other things to consider are the terrain, and this comes in a couple forms. Probably the most obvious of this is water. This is a very dry region, no rivers around, but if I was over, say, here along the coast, already built my city here along this river, then I'd want to consider a tech like, say, Aquapulvistics, which will give me a dust boost to any nearby river or lake or sea tiles. And the game will actually tell you if you have this tech which buildings you can actually build in your city at that time. For instance, if I did have this researched, but I try to open my capital here, they would be grayed out, like the Museum of Moraga is currently telling me that I can't really use it right now. Other things to consider are seasons. Some of these texts only work during the summer, and others only really work during the winter. Let's go back to Aquapulvistics. You'll notice that not only does it need to be near a river for the dust dredger, it only works during the summer season. Same for, say, this one over here in Tier 2. Hydrology will get you the canal system, but that only gives you industry on terrain during the summer season. So yeah, you can wait to get these texts later on when you've colonized more regions that would benefit from it. But keep in mind, winters get longer as the game goes on, so you're not going to get as much benefit out of these texts later. Other things too, tile types. Now I'm not just talking rivers and water sources. It'll, well, some texts will only give bonuses depending on what kind of fids already on the tile. In this case, Geomic Labs will unlock with topography, but that gives plus two signs on terrain that already has science. And you can see starting location for this city, not so great, but once I expand it a little bit to the north and the west, then that's going to be much more interesting and much more worth my time to get that tech. You'll also notice too that some texts are surrounded by this little glow here. That is to indicate that it has a building in there that you can only build once per empire. 
and typically these buildings give a bonus to citizens that are assigned to work that particular FIDSI. In this case, topography also gives the Center for Mineralogy, which gives plus 5 signs per population assigned to it on the city. So this is going to be something you'd want to consider for later once you have specialized cities. You're not going to put that in the city, you're not going to specialize in science, you're not really going to benefit from it there. But in a city with a high population that you know is going to be science specific, oh yeah, definitely get this tech. Now for a general order on how to start out here, again very contextual but this will give you an idea. Mill Foundry first. That's pretty much the only surefire thing of this whole discussion. You get Mill Foundry first, that's that. And then Public Library comes second, and that's that. Unless, of course, you're playing as the Forgotten, who don't get this tag. Then after that, you're going to want to consider where you're starting. In this case, pretty decent dust, and I don't really need dust as much as the Vaulters, especially if I use this glass steel... Excuse me, this glass steel booster to increase my dust output. So, I decided to go for seed storage first and cultivation to get more food in my city. And then I went for the Empire Mint. And the same with the luxury resources. If you don't have a strategic resource in your starting region, don't get Alchemist for this early. In this case, I have glass steel, so I am okay there. Two, you're going to want to keep an eye on our mercenary markets. This is how you get other heroes later on. This is important. You have to pick this up somewhat early. But not too early, because heroes cost a lot. You need to make sure you can afford them. And language square for minor factions. This is how you can either bribe a village to be friendly or parlay with them and try to do a quest to earn their favor instead. I consider language square to be pretty important because not only do you get the quest which can give you some interesting things like quest technologies which you can't research normally, you also would potentially get three free citizens right off the bat. Like say, I was doing the quest for this region, I already talked to the Silics, and they're all happy. As soon as I put this settler down, those villages will automatically start contributing towards that city, which is amazing as a boost. Also, if you destroy all the vigils, that makes sure that they're not going to be hostile, but this also means you have to rebuild it, which can take some time early on. Later in the game, not a big deal, so if you're playing as a more war-heavy faction or just a more war-heavy playstyle in general, then you might want to avoid Language Square because you'll be rebuilding everything anyway. That's entirely up to you, I personally prefer it. Things to avoid... Sewer system I only sometimes get, only if I'm playing a very large Empire 2 early on, because it gives an approval boost, which is the best thing about it, and it gives a tiny influence boost, but later on there's much better techs and buildings for it. And I never get search party. It doesn't really add much in my opinion. Although I can see a use for it if you bundle it with a much later tech in tier 4, which is endless mechanisms. This will allow you to plunder ruins a second time. And... It's important for tier 4, so this tech's actually useful, and here's why. Early on, at this point, you're only going to loot, say, titanium and glass steel. Tier 4, you can loot any of the strategic resources and any of the luxuries. So that alone makes it really useful. It also increases the amount of dust you get from looting, which is also good. Now, once you've researched enough techs here, and move on to tier 2, which takes 9 total, but you start out with 2 unlocks, so really 7 at the beginning. I would recommend going for Glory of Empire, Alchemy Workshop, or Meritocratic Promotion. In whichever order you would prefer, it depends on your playstyle. Personally, I like to go Alchemy Workshop first, as long as I have the Titanium for it. And then I'll do Meritocratic Promotion if I'm building up an army, and then Glory of Empire. And Diplomat's Mance is important too. For those of you coming from Civ, yep, you gotta research a tech to declare peace. This is mostly worthless if you're going completely warlike, of course, but if you want to be peaceful and get trade routes to your friends, then it's going to be essential to get. At the very least, too, to delay them declaring war on you, because it costs more to declare war 
from a peaceful standpoint than it is from a Cold War standpoint, which you start out in. And this is how you do trade routes. This will unlock the ability to do roads in your empire, and at least you can trade with your own city, so even if you are going to war, there's still a benefit to getting this tech. It just wouldn't be quite as nice of a bonus as connecting to someone on the other side of the map is. Now, in an earlier playthrough, I might have said that this was not worth it, and here's why. Back before the patch, the AI never built trade routes, they never researched this tech, unless you traded it to them, and then they would use it. But because of that extra hassle, it wasn't really something you'd benefit from. And now that they actually do research this tech on their own, and they do use the trade routes, this will actually kick in right away for you, so it's a very good benefit. Also, watchtowers have an added boost now. You'll notice that, along with their usual health regen, they add a detection range now, which is essential if you're going against cloaked enemies, especially the Forgotten, who are cloaked all the time. And then, everything else depends on what you're doing. Going to battle, get alchemical armor at the very least, so you get the hero uh, accessories, which will boost your entire army's stats. Get the weapons too while you're at it. The units you unlock, that depends on what's going on. Like say, I wouldn't get a Dawn Officer if I get another cavalry unit from a minor faction that can fill that niche just as well. But in this case, since I haven't found any yet, I probably would get him. Speaking of minor factions, Native District in Tier 2 will allow you to assimilate a second one. And I'd say that depends on what's nearby, how many villages you've befriended. I'd say if it's less than... Well, let me rephrase that. I'd say if it's two or three, it's worth it. If it's one, not really. And another tech too, I'm thinking of it. Pillage. This is absolutely one I'd pick up later. I'm not going to use it much early on because my enemies, or my army is going to be busy scouting out the enemies more than trying to wreck their stuff. And my enemies might not have anything built to wreck yet. But later when I'm going to war and I have a powerful army who can't always get to the city they're trying to attack in one turn, well, park them next to a resource extractor, pillage it in one turn, and bam, free resources, disable it for eight turns. Very, very useful tech that came with the Shadows expansion. Moving to a playthrough that's later in the game to show you some other techs in here. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about the later ones, because again, these vary based on what your strategy is, but to give you an idea, Tier 3 is notable because that's when you unlock new resources, that would be Adamantian and Palladian. And then for luxuries, that would be all of those there. There's five that you can potentially unlock. And then tier 4 is when you get Mithrite and Hyperium, as well as the remaining luxuries. And I'd say, again, it depends on what's in your region, what you actually use, although at this point you will probably find uses for all of these. Now, I'm also going to talk about deeds for a little bit. Deeds are these things you see here. As I mentioned before, you can do the deeds for the following tiers as long as somebody else has gotten there before you. But they have some very, very notable abilities in some of them. I'm going to talk about the general unlockables here and then talk about the buildings, which are the bottom ones next. First, these top ones in tier 1 are both very useful. This one, if you can get it, will give you a permanent initiative boost, while this one will unlock a resource that you can use. Now, the requirements for the deeds should vary, I should say. For instance, the Wealth Harvester, this one, the requirement was be the first to gather at least 30 units of one luxury resource. And sometimes it's instead be the first to use four luxury resource boosters. And whoever gets it first will get... 130 of any tier 1 luxury, which is really powerful as long as it's not emeralds. Because imagine starting out with 130 wine. That pretty much seals your victory right there, so you would definitely want to aim for this. This one's harder because it always involves pacifying minor factions somehow, be it their armies or their villages. But I would definitely try to go for this achievement as well, or this deed I should say because getting an initiative boost is very important. And then there's this one. 
This one is really easy to get sometimes as an economic empire, and it's downright essential for it because it boosts your trade route income. This one, this one gives you that counter ability that I mentioned in the Guardian video. Basically, an item that anything can equip, even a basic unit, that'll give them the free counter ability. This is good for something slow, like these titans here. Stick them out front when you're positioning your troops in a battle, and when enemies attack them, they will get two chances to attack back. This one got nerfed recently, but it's still good. Get to a certain amount of dust or resources, and then you unlock 80 of either Adamantian or Palladian. It used to be 200, so it's no longer quite as broken as it used to be, but it's still very useful. And this one, it'll boost health regen, basically usually based on size of your empire or your armies, and I'd say this would be useful, especially against the Necrophage, because there's something that can easily whittle down the health of your entire army very quickly. And then there's this one, in tier 4, also downright essential for an economic victory. This will boost your dust income throughout your whole empire when it's happy. And you generally have to have a happy empire to get this one. This I mentioned in the Guardian's playthrough too, or the Guardian's feature video I should say. Basically, this is the item that reduces their spell cooldowns. This is especially good for Skoros, because he can heal more frequently. And the tier 5 ones, kind of lackluster. This one gives you 50% expansion disapproval on cities. Well, tier 5, you get all these techs here. These fantastic approval techs, which also add significant resource quantities to your city. And then there's this one too. Okay, you complete quests or level up a certain amount of heroes, and then you get a piece of armor that is not as good as anything you can make with Adamantian or Palladian. So, yeah, pretty lackluster. Buildings follow the same pattern too. The early ones are pretty good, but the later ones somewhat less useful. In this case, Tier 1 has a very hard one to get. To get the Museum of Horaika, you basically have to find 5 titanium and 5 glass steel from doing quests or exploring ruins. I'd say if you don't have the resources by it, like turn 15 on standard speed, it's not worth it. You're not going to get it in time playing against a high level AI. But it's very worth it if you can get it. Because when your empire is happy, it boosts your science a lot more, it boosts your dust a lot more. And keep in mind too, all these buildings at the bottom here work like districts, so they all level up the same too. Level this up to a level 2 museum, and that approval bonus is going to go up to 40. Now it only does this for the flat fits it gives, it's not going to boost the dust and science it'll give for your whole empire to 40%. But it's still very useful. Tier 2 has another tricky one to get because the AI tends to go for this one as soon as it can. This is another if you don't already have the resources either mined or plundered by like maybe turn 20, 25. You're probably not going to get it in time, but if you can, it's totally worth it. It's an industry boost for the city it's built in, and it will reduce the cost of districts in your empire. So more borough streets? No problem. They'll go up in a pinch. This one's actually related to a, a tactic I mentioned before, where you go back to earlier tiers to research the text. Now, as you research text, normally the cost will go up, even if it's going to a normal or an earlier tier. This one will reduce that cost a little bit, so they are a bit cheaper than text in a current era, as well as giving a science boost. This one, the Throne of Emperors. This is good for diplomatic playthroughs or ones with a lot of trading, like an economic playthrough, because it will reduce the cost of diplomatic treaties. Also useful for factions that use a lot of influence, like the Cult or the Forgotten, with their respective abilities, because it will give you an influence boost. And then Tier 5, again, pretty lackluster. It gives you plus 100 dust, and it reduces the maintenance on your army. And again, even the tier 3 buildings, these two, like this one which adds plus 4 dust per population assigned to it on the city, much more powerful. 
And you get to these up here too, like this one which adds 50%, or excuse me, 50 dust on the city and 40% on that city too. Nah, better buildings. Anyway, hope that gives you an idea on some things to do with text and answer some questions. Again, a bit freeform, but that'll give you an idea at least what to keep an eye out for and how to start out. Hope you guys liked it. I'll see you guys very soon for more tutorial stuffs.